And so this is CIS 114DE. Um, and again, the purpose of this course is to learn the uh, basics of Excel. Um, generally speaking, uh, after you have completed this course, um, you should be prepared to be able to take the Microsoft um, Office Specialist certification. So there's two levels for um, Excel within Microsoft certifications. The first level is specialist, and then the second level uh, is expert. And so they they encompass different um, they encompass different things. So I wanted to first of all uh, give um, go over who I am and give you the opportunity to interview me. So you can ask me any questions you have about myself or about the class or about Excel, what I like about it, what I hate about it, how it's going to be useful to you. Uh, and then I will go through the uh, first module or module zero. Um, and also the syllabus so you can know what's expected of you during this course. So let's start with uh, who I am. So uh, like I said, I'm Professor uh, Stevens, Christopher Stevens. I go by Professor Stevens. Um, it's not a hotty toddy thing. It's just a easier way to have respect. Um, so I am from Georgia, Macon, Georgia. It's uh, about eight miles north of the geographic center of the state. Um, Otis Redding is from there. If anyone knows who Otis Redding is. Uh, and I moved out there to Arizona in 2015. And I am also the director for the Office Applications and Technology Support Program, uh, which includes uh, Microsoft Office Specialist Certifications, Microsoft uh, Office Expert Certifications, uh, General IT uh, Certificates and Degrees. Um, and then also administration, administrative specialist uh, certificates and degrees. I am also the co-program director for the mobile app develop mobile app and programming development program. So that's our where we have certificates and degrees in um, developing apps um, and also in uh, learning programming and different programming languages. So uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions? about me. You can interview me, ask me any kind of anything you want. Free. You can type it in chat or unmute yourself and ask. Uh yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh what's your favorite thing about Excel? Um uh, my favorite thing about Excel is how much it can actually be used. Um so you can use Excel to display data, which is uh, the primary purpose of it, but what what do you do that? What do you do with that data once it's displayed? Like, do you just leave it in something that looks like a table, or do you graph it? Those are the two places that most uh, most of the time people stop at. So there's a lot more that you can do with it. Um, you can use it to um, understand a correlation between two things. Uh, before class started, I'm, I'm actually taking another class with in. Um, I'm taking a course in data analytics, and um, um, I was watching a video. That are interested in wanting us to see is called uh, "Do Storks Deliver Babies?" And so, some of you growing up, maybe you heard that you know storks deliver babies, uh, and find out well, that's not true. That's not where babies come from. But um, there is a very strong correlation between the population of storks and the population of babies born per year. Um, very, very strong. You can actually predict how many babies will be born based on how many storks are in the location, and vice versa. You can tell how many Storks are in a location based off how many babies are born per year. Um, we know that that's not true, right? There's no actual cause. Like if there's more storks, there's not going to be more babies. But there is a relationship between them. Um, and so, what, well, how do you understand that that is uh, false? No matter how strongly significant it seems that there is a a, a direct link between the two. Um, well, you can use Excel to to show the sorry, you can use Excel to calculate and to show all of those results. And you can also use it to uh, do a, a couple of other more advanced things uh, that will allow you to see what else is there a correlation between those two things. So in that case, what they actually found out is they are both linked to the, the size of uh, land. So the land mass. And so the larger the land mass, the more storks and also the more babies that are born, which makes sense, right? You're not gonna overpopulate your area. We just we don't we naturally don't think about doing that. Um, so, yeah. Um, and what would you say the most challenging thing is about Excel? I think the most challenging thing there is about Excel is that people 
um, put limitations on themselves um, with Excel, they believe that, oh, it's hard because it's spreadsheets. Um, I can enter that in, but it doesn't, it's not working how I want. Well, the idea is to understand uh, what is it you're entering. And sometimes you need to tell Excel that this is a number, or sometimes you need to tell Excel, no, this is text, or this is a date. Um, but when you're just typing it in, you ex kind of expect for it to already know that. But you have to realize that the computer is a computer. It has to be programmed and told what to do. It can kind of guess things sometimes, but it's not always accurate. And a lot of times people think that it's supposed to be smarter than they are. Um, and so that's usually what the most challenging thing is. Uh, for this class, what is the most challenging? Um, most of the time people have struggle with, um, when we get to module seven, uh, which comes from our chapter eight in the book, but it's uh, using statistical analysis. So using statistic functions within Excel. So those of you that uh, have to take business statistics um, or you may take another statistics course on campus. Well, uh, every, actually, I think every course on campus that has statistics in it now, because I, I know most of the teachers and I'm, I'm one of them too, we try to use Excel within it. Some students still will try to pull out like their TI-84 calculator and do all their uh, work on there. But we try to tell them, we try to have them use, use Excel because it's so much easier uh, to use and it's so much easier to view and understand. Um, but there's a lot of uh, statistics that we can do with it. And a lot of times people freak out with that too because they see it as, now I'm learning two things. Well, you're not, you're learning Excel and here's one function when it, within Excel that you can use to make your life easier. You don't even have to fully understand what the statistics is yet to know how to um, use the function. Um, and then the second thing is when we get to macros, which is the last thing we do. Um, and the reason for that is because it's programming, um, technically, and people freak out when they hear programming a lot of times because they think that, oh, I have to be some kind of rocket scientist in order to do that. No, we program all the time. Uh, we just don't realize it because we think programming has to be just on a computer. Um, it's just a, it's just creating a list of instructions and following them through to get a desired result. And you realize sometimes that the instructions you gave, maybe they weren't clear enough and you need to correct them, or maybe they didn't give the desired result. And so you need to go back and make changes. And that's all programming is. Um, and just the only difference is we're going to be typing it. Um, all right. Other questions? Uh, looks like someone said they were having trouble hearing. Um, Uh, are, you, are you able to hear everything now? Yes, I can okay. hear you. I just had to switch uh, laptops. I just had to log into my laptop. Okay, good. All right. Okay, any other questions? Can I ask you about the, what, the if the, there is the book for the class? Uh, what is the book for the class? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I'll uh, turn on a video again so you can see a copy, but I do have it in the Canvas course. So this is the book for the course. It's called uh, Go with Microsoft uh, Excel 2016 Comprehensive. Um, and there is a reason why I'm still using the 2016 book. Um, and the reason for that is because there are certain skills that you're supposed to learn based off of what this, uh, the competencies of this course that are in the 2016 version that we're taking out of the 2019 um, book. It is still available to do within the uh, 2019 software. So if you have two, well, Microsoft Office 2016 or higher, which um, if anyone even has 2016, it probably updated, it probably updated itself without you even knowing unless you told it not to. So you have the latest version of Office. Um, if you don't, I'll tell you how to get it. Uh, you get it free as a Maricopa student and you have it for free as long as you are a Maricopa student. Um, so, so, yes. Where can I get it? Uh, you can get the book uh, as an ebook. Um, I give you, I'll give you the ISBN numbers and you know what, let's go ahead and go, I'll go ahead and show that page on the screen. Okay. So there's the ISBN number for a print copy or e-text. The bookstore should have it so they, uh, would mail it to you. It should have been listed on, on your SIS and find a class as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and otherwise, you can always do the e-text. E-text is cheaper anyway. If you're comfortable uh, uh, looking at a textbook online, um, they give you a certain number uh, 
of pages that you can print from it as well. So sometimes students like to have the hard copy version just so that they can have something in their hand and they can make notes in. You can make notes on it um, through eText as well. Um, most of the vendors we have for it allow you to do uh, highlight and uh, make other marks within it, uh, other annotations. Um, but this is the textbook that you would use. And actually, you know, now that you said, I'm just gonna Google search this real quick. Um, because with COVID going on, Red Shelf sometimes, uh, well, actually, they usually they do this, period. But with COVID going on, I'm sure they're doing a lot more of it. But they would sometimes have uh, free uh, versions of the textbook. So let's see. I don't see. Yeah. Yeah. You know what happening? I cannot use my Amazon account. My Amazon account was hacked. Oh. And I am not unable to use it. I need to go to the book uh, store. Is the book store in soft months uh, still is open? Uh, no, you have to do it through. Um, you have you would have to order it uh, online through South Mountain Bookstore. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, trying to think of other way. You well, you can buy the ebook without going through Amazon. Like you can go to Pearson directly. Okay. And and do it that way. Um, mm -hmm. So like here's the newer version for twenty four ninety nine. Uh okay. that's like this one's fourteen ninety nine. Um mm -hmm. so yeah, it's it, there you can find it online for uh, pr uh actually usually cheaper for it. The only reason I tell people to usually go through the bookstore, it's sixty dollars for one. Um and two, you can usually have it for uh for rent for longer in case you want to take the two fourteen class afterwards. Um mm -hmm. and then the other thing is because it is uh you do have that annotation available to you so you can highlight uh, save certain pages, print out certain ones if you want to. Like that. So that's my suggestion. Is I I I want you to get whatever you need. So if you get the fourteen ninety nine version and it works fine, and you're able to use it all semester, go for it. Uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other uh, general questions? All right, um, in that case, I'm gonna move on to the course. So um, the way your course is set up is that you have modules and I, I started at module zero on uh, kind of my, this is what you need to do before you really start getting into things. But zero um, in most languages, uh, or when I say languages, I'm talking about like computer uh, programming languages. Zero is where you start at, you don't start at one. Um, so. That's kind of also why I have it like that. But we have eight modules and an exit survey at the end. And so generally, uh, so that's a total really of nine modules. But generally speaking, your modules will go for about two weeks time. Um, and the reason for that is because you have that first week where you're kind of, here are these skills we're learning. We're going to do a practice with a couple of these. And we're going to do another practice uh, with the other half. And then the next week you have one project. So um, where you are combining all of those skills together. Um, and so that way you have kind of uh, two weeks to fully show that, okay, I do understandings. And that first week it's more guided and more uh, directed. And then that second week, it's more of, okay, I learned these skills last week and I maybe I could practice some more a little bit this week, but at, by the second half of this week, I wanna make sure I do the final project for this to show that I can do this. Um, and that's the general structure that we'll have for it. You'll even notice, um, and those of you that already have the book uh, or have looked through here, we do projects A and B, and then the G is the kind of mastery. A, B, G, A, B, G, A, B, G. And the A and Bs, they have videos um, linked to them. You can probably find even more online with people that have done them. Um, and Pearson has been pretty open about being okay with having those videos um, made available. Um, and those that I found that were, um, uh, free to share. I have put links and embedded videos in uh, to Canvas. Um, some of them, honestly, I'll say are out of date because um, they have made changes to those projects. Uh, you would do the projects based, at, based on how they are in the book, um, not based off of, oh, I saw this in the video, so I'm just going to do whatever is in the video. Okay. Um, I always try to find more update ones and sometimes students tell me, hey, this this guy made this error in this video and then I like send an announcement about it um, and try to find a more up to date one or make one myself. Uh, there are certain 
legal rights about that though. So I try to be very careful and always I always ask Pearson if it's okay. Um, so I try to stick to the ones they told me are okay to share with you all. And um, you also notice that in each module, uh, we'll have a supplemental instruction. And what this is, you guys can see, is here's a link to uh, and some other, here's a link to some uh, lessons that you could go through to kind of understand what's going on. I will provide instruction in, in class with a uh, sample. Uh, and I'll actually kind of just show you what that's going to look like right now. But pretty much it'll be a sample kind of script. So like, this is what we're going to do here. And you see on the side, you get an objective of, hey, this is what this is what I should know how to do by the end of this. And then some instructions to tell you what to follow. Um, and this is very similar to how you uh, how you would have it in the book, except the book would also give for projects A and B, except the book will also give you pictures um, to go along with that. So that you can like kind of check, OK, did I do that part right? Um, and in my mind, they sometimes even go further in detail with things. Uh, I try my best to be as detailed as possible with these, uh, but sometimes they are more in detail. Uh, and I, so I would go over one of these with you all. And then, for instance, this is similar to 1A. So what that means is I would go over something that's similar to 1A, and then you could do 1A. So you would have the book, which has got an instruction and pictures, possibly a video as well to go over 1A with you. But before we even did that, I have gone over the skills with you. Um, and then, let's see, I'll give you instruction on where the pages are in the book. Um, so the greatest success I've seen with students, and when I say success, I'm not talking about getting an A. It's honestly very easy to get, a, get an A in this course uh, if you follow the instructions very carefully as you're going through the textbook. Um, and then asking any any questions uh, that you may have along the way, um, doing these scripture lectures uh, with me um, is, is something is something else that also helps out a lot. Uh, but I've seen people get A's by just going straight through the book and being very meticulous to detail within it. Because sometimes the book doesn't like bold something that you're supposed to do. It'll just be in plain text, and sometimes people just miss over that. Um, but I do allow you to, if you submit your work in on time, you're allowed to uh, go back and correct it, and I tell you pretty much exactly what you need to correct. Um, so it's usually pretty easy to go do that. So that's why it's easy to get an A. Um, I don't want to say easy to get an A. It is, it is very simple to get an A. Um, but that's not the true success. The true success is actually understanding um, the objectives and them becoming a part of your heart. And you're able to do use these things on the fly whenever you need to and understanding when to use them. Uh, and so that usually happens from people going to the scripture lectures, going through the book. And they usually actually read the book and highlight certain portions. Um, that they're going to keep, you know, like in the things that are very important to them or like, oh, I should remember that. Um, and that's what usually helps them the most. So I'm not going to tell you that you should go through and read before you actually do the project. Uh, it has just been reflected back to me that that's what has helped students the most that are truly successful with Excel. Um, and those are the students that also usually go on to 214 as well. So but anyway, as you can see, I, I'll provide uh, videos as well. And then from Pearson, um, directly, um, so I'm legally I was not allowed to add or subtract from this. So, uh, but it is a PowerPoint that will go over um, that entire chapter as well. So, like I said, I'm not legally allowed to um, add or subtract anything from this. Um, but they do do a good job, in my opinion, of, like I said, giving pictures and they even mark off where certain things are. Because uh, I'll use these names and I'll try my best to always explain where, where I'm talking about if I say like name box and things like that. Um, but they have a constant picture for you to look at. Uh, so that's here as well. And then we will get to your actual assignment. And um, telling you where it is step by step. And then the rubric, make sure you complete those uh, activities within that project. So the rubric's there as well. Um, and I am working on trying to get a more detailed rubric for uh, the A's and B's, um, just because there's so much detail within those uh, to make it a little easier for you all to see. Similar to what I did here with all the G's. G's were usually the ones that students uh, would have the most trouble with because you are jumping from where you have uh, extreme guided instruction with the pictures and sometimes bold, bold words and things like that. 
whereas G is like, hey, here's the directions, go for it. So I try my best to um, add more details into the rubric. So that's why it looks like this for the Gs. I'm going to go back home here. Any questions so far about the structure of the course, how you'll go through each uh, of the assignments, and we'll have the scripture lectures? Okay, good. Oh, yes. I I do um, will you be able to put the assignments little tab in the ones where we can view it too? Uh, can you say that again? The assignments, I see you have it that we aren't able to see it on like the student's view. Is there a yeah. way that you can add that so we will be able to see that? The assignments? Yeah. So the assignments are in the modules. The reason I removed, uh, the reason I don't have you directly just seeing the assignment link is because um, most times students will just go to that and never look at anything else. Um, when I say look at anything else, I'm talking about the supplemental instruction and then maybe even the videos and things that I have there to help you. But the assignments are still listed here as you go down in order. Um, and students that have, like I said, if they have just gone straight to doing the assignment, there have been some that have um, done very well in this course and in regards to grade wise and just getting an A, but they tend to not actually learn anything. So that again is the reason why I don't just have the assignments available for you to view. Um, same thing with the syllabus, it's not listed out there either. Um, I've I've learned over the last three years that students love to just see, click assignment and go, but they don't, they miss all the material that leads up to it. So um, that's the reason that's happening. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go through this uh, first part here. So that's just the video introducing um, this course. Um, my phone number here, my cell number um, is available to you. If you contact my office number because of everything going on because of uh, COVID, we're not allowed back on campus at the moment. And so my office uh, phone number will um, go straight to my cell here. So just makes sense to just go straight to myself. So if you um, you have a question or you need to talk, you can text um, and we can set up like a time to call on the phone or you could just call that number. Uh, when you do call it, the first thing I'll ask you is for a name and that's just for me uh, for me to acknowledge to answer or not because if it's a telemarketer, usually they don't leave a name. Um, so when you do that, just say like CIS114 and whatever you're in your first name and that should be enough for me to, okay, I need to, Big cell in my head right now, so I can help this person. Uh, here's my email as well, just like um, most instructors, first name, period, last name at southmountaincc.edu. Um, my office at the, at the current time is in the same personal media room that you guys are in for uh, for class. Uh, so this class is from Tuesday is on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 to 2.15. So you can click the link here from um, the course welcome. You can click the link from the syllabus, the one from the calendar invite I gave you or just have it bookmarked, whatever you need to do to make it easier for you. Uh, office, I have office hours Monday through Thursday from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Um, I try to make mine every day of the week because that tends to uh, help students, uh, it helps me be more available to students. If you need, if you need help outside of that um, from me, feel free to just set up an appointment with me. Like I said, you could text me. I'm usually up pretty late. Um, and if I don't respond back, I will get back to you. Don't think I'm just going to ignore you. Um, but uh, and do you know my office hours are call office hours, but that's not just oh me in my office doing stuff. No, that's my time uh, specifically for students, um, and that's it. It's not for me just to sit and do homeworks or work on other things. Um, it's for me to help you all. So some instructors call them tutoring hours now, but I didn't want to do that because when I tried doing that, students thought that that was the time they had to go to the tutors. And then if they were, were not available, then it would look like I just gave them misinformation. So it is time to come see me. Um, and it will be again through the same link. So that way you don't have to worry about having three different links uh, for this course. You just have one. Okay. And so we're going to look at lots of different things within Excel, how to analyze data, uh, how to do what ifs, um, like. If you have certain data and you want to say, well, what if this um, variable of it change, what would the outcome be? Uh, we'll, cre we'll create macros and we'll do some programming. Um, some forms we'll make. 
uh, so statistical analysis. We'll do a lot of things uh, within this course. So there's another video kind of going over the structure of the course. Um, this course is three credits, so that means that you, on average, would spend about nine hours a week on it. Um, does that mean you have to spend nine hours a week on it? No. Some people um, have done this in uh, two hours a week. Uh, and I've had students that have spent 16 hours a week. Um, it all it all just depends on your um, your knowledge and your growth and how much um, commitment you put in. And also being very attentive to details. Sometimes people floss over stuff, especially like I said, from the book, um, because things aren't bold all the time, and so they miss things. Um, so the more meticulous you are with that, um, the less likely it will be that it'll take longer for you to not just complete things, but to start picking up and understanding it. Um, and don't don't be hard on yourself too if you don't say like you don't understand something right away. Uh, we have 16 weeks and a lot of things are going to be repeated over and over again. Some people are going to be annoyed that why is it teaching me this again? I already know how to do this. Uh, but some of you may pick it up second or third time. So uh, make sure you uh, communicate me with your student email, uh, not your personal email. Um, if I ever communicate to your personal email, it's because I'm 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 not reaching you from your phone. From your student email and I, or your camp, even Canvas inbox. That is the only time I ever go to, to uh, personal email um, if you've shared it with me. Um, but if you ever want to contact me, it's best to just do so straight through your student email and just put in the subject line, like at the beginning, CIS114DE. So that way I know uh, to look for it. Because if you just put Excel question or something like that, I get those from not just my students, I get those from um, other faculty member and staff on campus and from other campuses and sometimes Microsoft will send me some Excel stuff. Um, so if I just see Excel, I don't know if that's like um, advertisement or spam or something that I can avoid for a little bit. Um, if it's a student, I'm not going to avoid it. I don't, and I don't want to avoid it. I want to make sure your question is answered quickly. Um, Netiquette, so this is just how we behave online. Um, you guys can read through that. Pretty much it all comes down to just respect. Um, so we want to respect each other and each other's time. So, for example, if you feel like, and, and this is an honest thing, that I, I love to say this beginning in class and no one ever does it. But um, if I, if you feel like I am um, jabbering too much whenever we're going through an Excel assignment or something, just send a private message to the chat and just like, hey, I think you're you're lingering on or you're going off topic or something. And it, it's just a nice way to kind of bring me back because the point is for me to teach you guys what you need so that you can be successful. Uh, Okay. Minimal computer skills and technology requirements. Um, you all were able to access the internet because you're here today. Uh, I would have a way to save and retrieve your files, whether that is using a USB or flash drive, uh, whatever you want to call it, memory stick, uh, or using a cloud service, a cloud storage service such as Google Drive or um, OneDrive or Dropbox, whatever you want. But the reason I would say uh, to save your files in that way is in case you switch between um, devices um, or in case you swear you're uploading it correctly from your computer into Canvas and for some reason it continues to be corrupted on my end. Well, if you send it to the, uh, if it's already saved through the cloud, maybe it was something on your computer that corrupted it. And I mentioned that example because it actually happened last semester. I had, um, I had two students that had corrupted files because of their computer being corrupted. Um, but it got corrupted after they, they did some things. Um, but when they had it in the cloud, it was already saved and it was fine uh, before the corruption happened. So uh, I was able to use those in order to um, grade them instead of you know them having zeros before not turning in work. Uh, so we were able to solve that because of that. So um, it's important to kind of make sure you have your things saved in probably two places actually is probably best. But um, keyboard and mouse um, and also, in this course, it won't matter if you have a, a Windows computer so, or a Mac OS X computer. Um, the only difference with the Mac is that the files will, oh, not files, sorry, Excel will look different on a Mac. The way you get to certain things will be different. And uh, what, I've tend, what I tend to do for this course um, is when a student has a Mac, I like for them to, if they're available, if they're okay with it, to share their screen for all of us to see, um, because they might not be the only one with the Mac. Uh, usually, about 50% of students have a Mac computer, uh, but that way everyone can see 
how it's different and how you can still do the same thing. So I'll, I'll walk you through that. And if you ever feel like you haven't, uh, you don't understand exactly how to do it differently on a Mac, just ask me and I'll help you with that. Uh, I will be getting my Mac computer from the school soon. So I'll be able to do that um, as well. Do not use uh, do not use Google Sheets to do your work. Um, this is a class on Excel spreadsheets, not just spreadsheets. Um, and things in Google Sheets are not the same, and there are some major differences. Um, I've had students try to do Google Sheets. Um, this is actually in a different class, but it's still with Excel. They would do things in Google Sheets and then download it as an Excel file and turn it in, and they thought that everything was fine. Um, but it, it wasn't because when that download happens, it it changes what the file looks like and how um, it operates. So especially when we get the macros, um, that's a that's a def, that's a definite because macros are written in a different language on sheets as opposed to as opposed to what they're written in uh, on Excel. So um, don't don't do that. Um, all right. And then for access to computers, in case you don't have access to a computer or something happens. Uh, South Mountain does have a limited uh, opportunity um, in the Computer Commons, which is in the TC building. So whenever you, if you've ever gone to this, if you've ever been on campus and registered um, in the SES building, it's connected to the ups, the ups, the upstairs part of the TC building. Um, and in that upstairs part is what's known as the Computer Commons, which is pictured here. Um, they will have computers available. Uh, like I said, it will be limited due to social distancing. Um, and when you go to these computers, just like any other computer on campus, make sure that you sign in with your MEID and password. Um, and I suggest trying to go to the exact same computer every time if you're going to frequent there, because every time you go, it is creating a new user image of you um, if you go onto a new computer you've never been on before. So what that means is it takes longer for it to load if you keep going to different computers. And it also won't have your work saved that you did on the computer to the right. Uh, When working with Canvas, they tell us to suggest the students to use Chrome. It works with uh, Firefox and Safari and others as well, but Chrome has been found to be the best one. Um, and you actually should not need any other plugins at this point in time. So for those of you that do not have Microsoft Office, um, I'm going to show you how to get to it so you can download it for free. If you go to login, microsoftonline.com you'll put in your MEID at maricopa.edu that's very important no matter if you have a even if you have a job on campus don't use your um, job email use your student email regardless so MEID at maricopa.edu uh, and then it'll take you to the uh, Maricopa SharePoint page to, to log in. Okay, um, you have an option to stay logged in if you want want to. And then here you are. You can you have Office 365. Now Office 365 does work. Um, similar to how Google Sheets does, where it's uh, a cloud-based service. And as you see here, one of the applications it has here is Excel. So should you use this Excel or should you use the one that you're going to have on your machine? Well, the answer is you should use the one that's on your machine. And the reason why is because it's going to look, uh, it's the one on your machine is, is going to look similar to what you see in the book and through our guiding instruction. Also, it is the, the version on the machine is what has everything available. This on online platform does not. You can still choose templates and things like that. You can still pin um, uh, workbooks. And it looks almost the same. But I won't be able to do things with macros. There are some things with tables that will be missing. Um, and there are some other features that will be missing that will be paramount uh, when we are working in um, when we're working in Excel, uh, some data validation stuff, uh, some things with um, data analysis that we're going to do. All of those things are not on here. And Microsoft knows this. And so when they have Office 365 in their applications, they even have a, um, a tab 
command that allows you to open the desktop application, meaning whatever I do on here, if I realize that this, I get to a point where, hey, I can't use this anymore, I need the actual machine version, I can just click on open in, in desktop app and it'll ask me to resume editing. Yeah. And what would happen is that um, Microsoft Excel would open up um, and then it would con I can continue working on it from there. So, yeah, of course I have to sign in on mine, but that's how we will be able to continue. Okay. All right. So um, back to Office 365, because some of you still, you may now, now you understand you have a cloud-based version you use, but you may not realize that you can install Office from here. So there's a button right here that says install Office. You could click on this and you have, um, you can have Office downloaded on five different machines with your username, thanks to um, you being a student in Maricopa. I tend to tell people um, nowadays, because before when you clicked on that, it would automatically recognize, oh, you have this type of operating system, so I'll give you this version of Office. Um, I have seen people with Mac computers that have been getting Windows uh, version when they download it, which of course will not work. Uh, so I tell people now to go to the install other options, and from here, you can click install office um, or go to view apps and devices so you can be more specific about what it is that you're uh, selecting. And this is also where you can see, like, let's say, um, oh, you also have the options here for iOS, Android, um, in case you want to put it on a phone or tablet in Windows. Um, but you can also see here that, hey, I have I have a Mac OS that I can sign out of. So let's say you install it on a computer for like your family to use as well. This is how you can sign them out of it. So that way um, you don't, like in case you need another, um, you need to log in to, to a different machine and you don't have one available, this is where you can kick someone off, okay? Or make sure that you're logged out of a certain device. So once you have Office installed on your machine, you will be pretty much good to go. The, uh, these computer hardware suggestions of a microphone and webcam, those are generally already in, um, most devices so I, i'm not telling you you have to go out and buy them um you would only need them honestly for us to meet in this format um, so go on here so require course materials so kind of already talked about it so i say that there are two steps still here the textbook is the first one so you can use get the e-textbook if you want that's the uh quickest suggestion um and the second thing is to download all your student data files. And so student data files, what those are, are those are um, the files that you will need to begin some of your projects. Now, some of them will say, hey, open up a blank workbook, which means you open up Excel from scratch and you um, you start a new blank workbook, kind of like what I did earlier uh, when I went through Office, Office 365 and where I resume editing in the desktop application. Um, but sometimes we'll start off with some data because we don't wanna have to rebuild everything for us to teach you a concept. And so the student data files have everything. So I created this button here in Canvas so you can just click it and it'll automatically download everything that you would need to complete this entire book. Or if you wanna be very specific, you can go to this link. And as you can see, it has each chapter and I can click on each one to get uh, the specific data files for that chapter. Um, one thing to note within this, when you get your book, you'll see it says chapter one for the first portion of it. Um, if you notice that in the top right corner that those pages have a goal mark. That's because those are for learning how, how to use Office, not Excel, but Office in general. Then the rest of them will all be green. And like the next thing you'll see is a chapter one with the green. That's green represents Excel, uh, which you guys probably notice in the uh, web app application that it's green for the uh, ribbon and in the actual desktop application, it's green as well. So Excel has a green color uh, scheme to it. But those are the required materials that you'll need for this course. Thanks for student data files. Um, like one thing to note, which I can't show you on my screen, and when I tried to do student view, um, it was not working. Um, so 
some of these pages, and I'll actually I'll show you from the home page because they'll tell you exactly which ones have it. Um, they have these contract things uh, where it'll say mark is done. What that means is when we at the when you go to a page that says mark is done on it, so like the page we're going to, you'll see in the top right corner a button that says mark is done and have a circle on it. If you click that, you're saying I have viewed this page. That is for uh, for me. Um, and for you, you can think of it as kind of a checklist to like, okay, I did these things that I that the professor told me I need to make sure I at least look at. I've done that. And it's also uh, kind of like a con contract saying, like, if you say that, oh, well, you never went over this, and or you never told me where the assignment was. Well, there is a button that you click saying that you saw that the information was there. Uh, so make sure you do those um, as well. Okay, so technical help and uh, student support. If you have any issues with Canvas, I, get, I have you, pretty much gave you a couple of videos that can um, help you with that. You can always contact me as well. Um, there is Canvas support, um, but they like for it to go through faculty and we channel that upwards. Um, tech support, same thing. If you have an issue with a computer on campus, you can use the student uh, help desk. Or if you rent, rent, rented a computer from campus, you can go through the same thing to discuss your issues and get help with that. All right, and there are tons of other resources available, disability resources, uh, ways to assist with tuition payment plans, um, scholarships, things like that. All of those are available on a student's page um, at the SMCC website. So before you take this syllabus and acknowledgement quiz, meaning that you acknowledge all the things that we discussed and also have read through the syllabus, let's kind of look through the syllabus. The first part of the information is, um, is we've already gone over. It's just my basic contact info. Um, as I said, there are uh, computers available in the computer commons, rental computers. As I heard from yesterday, that had, they had no more at the moment, but they were planning to get some more. So if you are in need of a rental laptop, that option will become available again shortly. Um, and let's just say you only had a tablet or a phone and something happened uh, to, or something happened to your laptop and you only had a tablet or a phone left over. I have uh, a way to create a virtual machine meaning a virtual um, desktop for you that you can access on uh, even like an iPhone or an Android phone, uh, depending on how up to date it is. Um, and you will look just like a uh, Windows computer because that's what it will be. Um, and you can do your homework on there as well. Um, depending on your device, the internet connection will be a little slower or it may just feel the exact same. So that's something else to keep in mind uh, as well. Um, all right, and so yeah, here's the inf information about when the Computer Commons is open. And what tutoring will be available. So they do have online tutoring as well. That's available. Um, all right, well, one thing about this course is that a lot of times students will think that it's self-paced. I've heard that even though we have a class time, Students have told me that they felt that they, they couldn't come to class, which I am I am flabbergasted and still don't understand where they got that concept from. But they felt that because I had everything already up available to them online, they weren't allowed to come to class. That is not the reason I have that up there. The reason I have that stuff up there is because when I was a student, I would get very upset sometimes when instructors froze everything. And like all of a sudden I had, a, I had extra time, I could move ahead knowing that in a couple of weeks I'd be super busy so I wouldn't have as much time. And so I have that available to you guys so that you could go through everything. Uh, I've had students finish this course in two weeks, and I've actually had one student finish the entire course in three days. He literally took off work three days and just went ham all the way through and finished everything. Um, and just a side note on that, if you do finish things earlier, um, that does not mean that I will get to it grading wise earlier. I try my best to stay on top of grading period. So I, even if you have done it earlier, I'm not going to wait till the week of when everyone else has done it to start grading yours. Um, but sometimes that occurs just because of how, how busy um, things get. But I always try to be a week um, ahead with uh, a week ahead with grading. So what else to keep in mind? Um, but that also means you shouldn't get behind schedule. So based on financial aid eligibility, uh, we are told that if a student is not actually participating in a course for uh, 14 days, they must be dropped from the course. Um, so that means if I don't see you turning in assignments, I usually after the first week, 
if you didn't turn, say you didn't turn something in or you turned in late, I'm going to email you and ask, hey, what's going on? Is everything okay? Um, if it's two weeks of that, then uh, I, depending on if you just haven't contacted at all, and haven't done anything, or if you have, have done some things, um, but you may have turned in, like I've had students sometimes turn in work that is completely uncompleted. It's like they started the first activity and that was it. Um, depending on the circumstances, you could be dropped from the course at that point. Um, so communication is very is key with that. Um, don't feel like I'm not going to help you. Please don't feel like that. I am making myself available uh, every day of the school week, so Monday through Thursday. I am willing to set up appointments uh, anytime outside of that um, if it is available. Um, and if it's not available with me, I have I, I know the tutors that can assist you, and they are willing to go outside of their hours to help too. Um, there are a lot of people that uh, want to make sure students understand Excel a lot. And there are a lot of people on campus that do un that do understand Excel and are willing to help with that. So even if it's not me, I will, I will, and this, if it's not me that's available to help you at a certain time that you, that you need, I will find someone that will. Um, so don't think that this, you're on your own. Please don't think you're on your own in this class because you're not. We have a set time for class, Tuesday and Thursdays, 1 to 2.15, and I'm available at the times I've told you, uh, and then possibly outside of that as well. Um, okay, we already talked about required materials, computer requirements, uh, having a USB or some kind of other storage device, uh, calendar of dates. As I said, everything is, things are due uh, module-wise every two weeks, so pretty much you can think of every week you have something due. Uh, that's the easiest way to think of it. Every week you have something due, except for the week of Thanksgiving. I always try to uh, have that completely off um, for students because we still have to come in for two days, but um so yeah um in that regard uh or something with that oh yeah that's usually the time students usually go ahead um is the week of thanksgiving because they're like oh i got three days before thanksgiving let me go ahead and finish the rest of the semester so something to keep in mind um yeah if you turn in stuff on time so by the due date you are eligible for corrections and resubmissions so you would just resubmit to the same exact spot and again, in the rubrics, I'll tell you what correct what correction need to be made. And the last day that those will be accepted will be the official last day of classes, which is December 18th. And yes, I have stayed up at uh, close to midnight on that Friday before um, getting these things done. Uh, I will be probably on a plane to Georgia at this point to attend my brother's wedding on the 19th, but I'll still be willing to do that and get getting those um, corrections done if you if you need them. Um, Yes, and so that syllabus um, and acknowledgement quiz needs to be done uh, by today. So towards the end of this course, usually that's the time I say, hey, make sure you guys do this. Um, your grades are point-based. It's, it's a percentage out of 800 points. There are eight modules available. Each module has 100 points available to it. With that being said, there are 40 points uh, available outside of that with the syllabus and knowledge quiz, uh, your introductory discussion, um, the formative evaluation, and then the exit survey as well. Um, so there's 40 points of extra credit you can think of that's available in this course, but it's all based out of 800. So um, if you're ever wondering, how, do you have enough points to get to the grade that you want to? That's how you can um, do that. You look at how many points you have and then compare it from there. So I already talked about corrections. Uh, you submit your assignments on Canvas. Do not email me your assignments. I've had students in the past that would try to only email me. Uh, do not resubmit in comments unless, or don't submit anything in comments um, of, can, of, of a Canvas assignment unless I tell you to. Um, another thing. So if you feel like you have, uh, you, you need some accommodations, you can contact Disability Services. Uh, to discuss them, uh, some maybe some issues that you are having or that you're recognizing, um, and they can talk about combinations and then testing as well. Uh, speaking of tests, there is no final exam for this course. Um, all the all the assignments are project based, and it's increasing um, based off what you learned from previous from the previous module before. So pretty much the culmination will be within the last um, within the last three. Uh, modules will be a culmination of kind of everything that you've uh, learned. So in some kind of, in some way, shape or form. Um, so that's how I kind of test to see, if, are you being comprehensive as you move through this? 
on email, talked about that. Uh, withdrawing from the course, uh, if you don't withdraw towards the end and then you want like a W or something, that's going to be dependent on your work. I tend to have never had an issue with this uh, or have students wanting to withdraw unless there was like an extreme emergency came up. And I, I mean, if that's the case, I'm going to give you the W. I'm not going to try to penalize you for that. But if it comes, if it does come down to it um, between a W and an F, um, just let me know what you prefer. I've had students tell me, please don't give me a W, give me an F instead. Um, for other classes, that's never happened with this course. Um, but yeah, the incomplete. Um, incompletes for this course, we're talking about um, getting an incomplete for a grade, meaning that you would have extra time outside of that to, to do stuff. The only times that has ever occurred has been um, when someone has had an extreme death in the family or been in the hospital for. Uh, you know, multiple weeks, um, they gave birth to a child, um, things like that. So the, don't ask for incomplete just because you feel like you, sh you need extra time. We've had students try to ask for incompletes because they have uh, accommodations, like they say that they need extended time for testing and stuff. That is not a reason to have an incomplete. So, um, yeah. Um, you're responsible for um, covering all the campus policies that are listed in the college catalog and the student handbook, anything pertaining to the syllabus. Um, I think everything else is pretty straightforward. You all can read through that. One thing I will point out is cheating because I had this happen for the first time in this Excel course last semester where uh, two students, well, I, I, but I don't know this for sure if it was just one student, but what I do know is that two students turn in the exact same work um every single time and they did like the date in which the assignment was created was the exact same they used the exact same computer to do everything uh, and i can tell all that stuff by looking in the meta, uh, make the metadata uh, so it's kind of like the data part that's talking about itself um and so i could see everything that was happening and I called them out on it the first time one apologized the other made an excuse next time it happened i was like okay so you haven't learned your lesson so that's that's a zero and as you'll see here your grade goes down 200 points automatically so that means the highest you could get is a c in this course um and so after that happened um they got better and then i, I don't, i'm sure pressure or whatever something came onto them to do it again and that was the end of it and so um they were withdrawn with the W, which is like a permanent failing grade on your transcript and does not go away. Um, and people see that too. So uh, what is cheating? It is using someone else's work and saying it is yours. Um, and it's also the other side. If you were to send your work to someone and then they turn it in. Um, and I've had a student cry about this before in a different class because they sent their work to someone thinking it will help them get started. They didn't realize that the person had just turned it in. Um, you have to keep that in mind when that happens. And so what I tell my students is to, if someone asks you to send you their work or for you to send them your work, email me before you think about doing it, because then I can talk to that student and be like, hey, so are you asking students for your work? What's going on? Do you need help with something? I'll be willing to help you with it. Uh, so that way you don't put yourself in that situation not even knowing. Uh, Okay. I think that is everything. Yeah, that's everything within here. So uh, this syllabus, of course, can be modified and changed. If I make any changes, I will let you know, uh, which I think I saw one that I need to make. Um, it said six E, it said E and F sometimes, where it's still supposed to be A and Bs. So just follow from the module, but I'll, I'll try to make that change as well. Here are all the uh, learning outcomes. So you're expected at the end of this course to be able to demonstrate creating and using spreadsheets, uh, to use formulas, functions, charts, and macros, and to demonstrate database techniques in a spreadsheet application. So some basic database techniques. Um, and then here are the competencies as listed by Maricopa. So are there any, does anyone have any questions about um, the syllabus? or this course? 
No? Okay, cool. Well, you can take the syllabus quiz and announcement right now if you want. I'm just going to kind of go through it so I can make sure everything has been covered. Um, I have read the entire syllabus, so we have, we have gone over it now, so you can select true there. Uh, which of the following ways is a way to contact the instructor? Check all that apply. And then there are three correct answers. Mm, phone. Well, I gave you my phone number. Maricopa email. I gave you that. Telepathy. Uh, I cannot read minds. So, and then Canvas inbox, which, yes, you can email through Canvas um, by clicking inbox and then selecting your instructor. Uh, if, if you guys need me to show you that, let me know. I can show you how to do that. This course uses Microsoft Office 2016 or higher. Do not use open, uh, do not use Calc, do you not use uh, Google Sheets, do not use an older version of Office. Instructional videos are the only source of learning. Well, they're gonna be videos, I said. There's also the textbook, right? There's supplemental instruction that's provided for you, and there's also the lecture. So this Video instructional videos are not the only instruction that's provided for you. This is false. Uh, you sign into your Google email, uh, select true. That way I can know that you know how to do so. And if you don't know how to, let me know. I can show you how. How will your assignments be submitted? Do not send me screen. Do not send me screenshots of your assignments. Do not share a Google Sheet. Do not print it out and have it delivered to me. It needs to be submitted on campus. This question is here because I have had all of these happen before. It must be submitted on Canvas. Uh, read the due date to so understand I must submit my homework by the appropriate due date. Yes. And then you are allowed to have corrections after that as well if you submit on time. Since my course is online, I can wait until three weeks or later to begin. No. Remember, you have 14 days or two weeks that you must be actively participating. And if you have not, you will be kicked out of the course potentially. And that's a consistent two weeks. So you could start off great and then just try to drop off. No, you still would be dropped from the course. Uh, and then the last two questions are more personal questions. Uh, personal questions. Uh, the first one pretty much is. Is this time work for everyone? If there's a, a better time, um, would, what would it be? This kind of could help me if I need to set up personal meetings uh, with you too, in case you um, it, the office hours and this class time doesn't work for you. And then the last part is uh, name, preferred email, phone, and alternate phone. Um, and indicate if it's okay for me to text as well in there. Um, that's something I've noticed that more students are prone to answer from a text message from me as opposed to if I call them, even if it's the time they set for themselves uh, for me to call. So my suggestion is to always uh, just let me know if it's okay to text as well. All right, so that's that syllabus quiz and acknowledgement. And then um, so you need to get those first eight things correct in order to uh, move on. But you'll see two other things here, discussions. The first one is I've taken time to introduce myself. I want to, you all to introduce yourselves as well. Um, it says upload a video or digital tool. You don't have to do that. If you're more comfortable just writing text um, for everyone else to, to see, that is fine. Uh, if you want to make a video, you can and upload that as well. Um, if you need help doing that, let me know. Um, you don't have to reply to anyone else's post. It is available if you want to. Uh, I don't want you to feel obligated, but you but feel free to because um, it's a great way to get uh, communication with the class. And you're also, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the WebEx meeting. So you have your own WebEx personal meeting room, just like the one that we're in right now. Um, you can use that for study sessions. Like maybe you and a friend in this class are having trouble with an assignment. You gotta, you guys want to work on it together and possibly even invite me in later. Um, you could work on it together without just doing, uh, like one person doing all the work and then submitting the same thing. Um, working on things together is not the same as uh, cheating. I wanna, I wanna uh, hopefully that's clear.
clear. Um, but if you, one person just does work and you submit it or you submit someone else's work, that's where the cheating is. Um, and it's, it is very easy to tell. Again, like you start you start something at the exact same time, finish at the same time, and you're both listed as the, uh, or one of you is listed as the author on both uh, workbooks, that's cheating. But uh, anyway, I'm saying that all in regards to the WebEx uh, meeting, you have your own. So if you ever want to set up a WebEx meeting, a personal meeting for you and a friend in this class, or even if you want to just do it to hang out, uh, I see people do it for game nights um, with their friends. They used to do stuff on campus, uh, have games, but or um, do game time on campus, but they can't do that anymore. So they use WebEx to do it now. Um, but anyway, uh, this is just for you, me to get to know you all, uh, for you all to get to know each other. And so the other thing, or the last thing, is a frequently asked question section. And so the point, purpose of this, so it looks like someone actually asked, like, am I able to use my laptop to do cell functions, or do I need to use a PC? So someone can ask a question, and you have the ability to reply back to them yourself. I will also look to uh, reply back to people. So um, any questions you may have during the class, it's probably something that other people are asking as well. Uh, I will tell you actually on even the first assignment, this usually is one of the most common thing that pops up in frequently asked questions, is that some um, people don't even realize that their screens are zoomed in automatically. So your um, screen's um, display resolution may be more than 100%, meaning that everything's zoomed in and, and your uh, shortcuts could look bigger on your screens and things like that. But you may not know that it's a factory, a factory setting or something. Well, in the assignment, um, there'll be times where it tells you to use a certain number of pixels to increase um, a column width or a row height. And when that happens, uh, your screen has been zoomed in. So it's going to look different pixel-wise than it would on someone else's. And so when you turn that in, when you turn that in or when you're doing it, you'll say, hey, it's not working how it's supposed to, but it is. So just use whatever pixels that they tell you to uh, in the instructions. Don't try to like make it up yourself. But if you ever have an issue with it and it's just like driving you crazy, just uh, let me know whenever you submit like in your comments. It's like, hey, I had issues with the pixels on my computer. Uh, that way it won't be counted against you. And I could show you how to do that. But I'll probably mention that when we get uh, through our first group. Like, so that's everything that I wanted to go over. We have about six minutes left. Are there any questions at all about um, this course um, and about what is expected of you? Anyone? Okay. All right. Well, sounds like. Everyone is good to go. Um, in that case, on Thursday, what we'll do is we'll go over a scripture lecture for 1A, kind of get a head start. Um, and that means that you could potentially even finish first part of your project for next week. You can finish uh, almost a week early. So we'll go over project 1A um, next week, or not next week, on Thursday. So I will see you all on Thursday at 1 o'clock. Same WebEx link, same WebEx time. And yeah. So if you do have any questions still, like I said, let me know. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.